Hey everybody, what's up? Tonight I want to talk about the Spyderco Delica. This is a knife that a lot of people probably have tried or handled or owned uh, in the knife community with good reason. So uh, when I went in the store to buy it, uh, I went with a friend who knows more about knives than I do. Uh, you've seen him in some of my camping videos. How you doing buddy? And uh, he sort of helped me pick out my first knife. Uh, so I didn't really know that much about it at that point. Uh, I kind of just said, okay, just show me a few things. Uh, they showed me the Spyderco Tenacious, the Delica, and I think maybe the Medium Cold Steel Voyager or something like that. So I don't have the Tenacious anymore. That is with my girlfriend now. But I do have the Persistence, so I'll throw that in there for representation. And I don't have the Medium Voyager, but I have the Large Voyager here. So these were sort of the representations of what I was introduced to when I was picking out my first real knife. So of course I went with the Tenacious. Uh, it felt a little heavier, it was maybe a little bigger. Uh, I really like the G10 uh, feeling. Uh, as soon as I handled that I just I fell in love with the uh, Tenacious. Uh, so that's what I picked up as my first knife. So fast forward maybe a month or two after that, after carrying the uh, Tenacious, uh, I wanted to get another knife and of course I love Spyderco. I just thought that they were like the coolest company ever and what a great way really to start your knife collecting journey with a Spyderco. I think it takes some people a long time to really warm up to, to Spyderco as a brand because they do look so different than, than other knives like I'll throw the cold steel back in there. Um, you know that hole in the handle I mean people might say okay that stylistically looks kind of odd and you know doesn't it create some sort of a weakness in the blade you know like uh, back here or something couldn't it break or who knows what right but I, I didn't I never really had time to think about that honestly like uh, I was attracted to Spyderco as a brand pretty much right off the bat cold steel I think I handled this briefly and you know no thank you kind of deal um, and I mean it's so funny how the knife collecting journey goes because then years down the road you end up getting it anyways but that's kind of another story so uh, yeah, I was really happy with the Tenacious and I picked up the Delica as my second introduction to the Spyderco lineup. And it really just grew from there. I ended up picking up a whole bunch of other Spydercos, not as many as some, but more than others. And uh, I continue to love Spyderco as a brand. I just think it's excellent. So this knife in particular, uh, let me talk about some of the things I really like about this knife. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I think it's really cool how they have all the different handle colorations. Uh, I'll throw in an Endura there so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I think this comes in maybe six different handle colorations. Uh, they just started doing orange and black. Well, I, actually, let me back up. I mean, the original Delicas and Enduras, they came in black, I think, pretty much exclusively. And then when they started doing the FFG, that's when they started going crazy with the colors. And so you see two of the colors here. In addition to this, they have... <clears throat> excuse me, uh, purple, gray, brown, and orange. Uh, I'm probably missing something, but I think that's it. So that's amazing. It's uh, so cool to see knives in that coloration because, well, you saw what I just showed you, right? Uh, pretty much everything is black. Uh, I'll throw in a sage there as well. There's another black knife. Got a Sog Flash 1 here, another black knife. So isn't it cool? Uh, and here's the Voyager just to complete the uh, the picture. Uh, isn't it cool when you have so many black knives out there to have a bit of color thrown into it? You know, one way to do that obviously is to throw a lanyard on your knife or whatever, but uh, that's sort of, that's a uh, substitute for having actual color in the handles, which is so cool, right? My favorite color is green, so of course that is what I chose uh, as my first option. And uh, so happy I did, you know. Uh, I think the color is just beautiful on this uh, and it's aged well. This is over a year old now and I've actually been carrying it for about a week straight, sort of uh, just, I don't know, to try something different. I have a lot of knives, but sometimes it's good just to stick with one thing for a little while and kind of get reacquainted with it. And I thought maybe I would do a review, so I just wanted to like uh, give it some pocket time and see how I felt about it after all this time. Uh, I find it very easy to clean out actually like I kind of just blast it with some hot water and which I did just yesterday I think so it's pretty clean in there right now uh, So yeah, despite the fact it doesn't have a um, a pillar construction where you can just uh, You know see through it like the like the sage here um, It is very easy to keep clean. So that's something to take into consideration Another thing that I really like about it is just the thinness of it 
And I'll show this up against the Voyager, but I probably should show it against the medium Voyager to be fair, but look at that. It's like a very significant difference. Uh, and I'll show this actually against the Endura just to do an, sort of an apples to apples comparison. Uh, but really these knives are much, much thinner than the Voyagers, maybe, I don't know, 30% thinner, something like that. But it, sometimes it's nice to have a thick knife because it's very hand filling, but these also fill the hand really well, you know, and uh, I'm gonna put the Endura down now because I've already done a review on that. <clears throat> but the, uh, the basic uh, principles apply here as well. So it's, it's a great, great uh, ergonomically, uh, it's an excellent knife, despite the fact that it's thin and it carries so well in the pocket, it also fills the hand so well, which is something that I really seem to have problems with, with smaller knives. So this is obviously an EDC knife, right? Um, it's not really big enough to be tactical or whatever you want to call it. I mean, this is probably closer to that uh, dimension. And I mean, of course the Voyager too, right? But this is pure EDC. So um, here's another famous EDC knife, right? The SOG Flash 1. And I mean, I have a video out on that, so you'll know my thoughts in more detail there, but I'm not a fan, suffice to say. And pretty much the reason why is this knife doesn't fill my hand. It doesn't even come close. It goes maybe, you know, three quarters of the way there kind of deal. And um, it's not bad, actually. I mean, it is half the weight of the Delica. So, I mean, you got to have some sacrifices there. No steel liners, of course. Uh, but I just don't like that, you know, that it doesn't fill the hand. It's like cramped to do any significant amount of work with. I was doing some cardboard cutting with this, uh, which I'll throw the footage in there. And I actually found that fairly challenging too. Um, so, I mean, that goes back to my sort of knife carrying philosophy. I'll usually carry something more like an Endura, maybe a Recon 1 every once in a while, something like that. I do like those longer blades because it's just more hand filling and it when you have to do a lot of work with it or hard work, it's a lot easier when it fully fills the hand and you have a little bit of extra blade to, to flex into. Uh, but this this knife did okay on the cardboard, you know, it's barely big enough. This is as small as I want to get with my EDC You know, uh, the Sage also is really a great option like um, I'll throw it right up against it there so you can see I think overall they they fill a fairly similar similar role like they are kind of more or less the same size um, So yeah, but uh, this is pretty much as small as I want to go and I think it's pretty much a perfect size for EDC one of the complaints I had about the uh, Flash 1, and that blade is just a little smaller, I think, than the, um, like the cutting edge is really not dramatically different, but the actual blade's emergence from the handle is pretty significantly different. Also, it's a lot thinner of a blade too, um, or sorry, more narrow, I guess. But I tried to cut an apple with this at uh, at work and I don't have an apple here but I do have an orange and I for demonstration purposes I think that will serve but um, the knife didn't go all the way through it I found I was having to kind of like go around the the fruit kind of deal and you risk kind of cutting yourself you know but this guy is sort of just a little bit longer you know so it just kind of gives me that sort of apple or in this case orange cutting length that I need to do one of my common tasks so that extra blade length combined with that sort of more ergonomic handle, you can see there's some like nice finger grooves in there as well. So it just fits into the hand very nicely. It is thin, I'll, I'll give it that, but that's like a plus and a minus, I suppose. But for me, uh, I think it fits the hand pretty nicely. Something I think that they could do to uh, improve that overall um, hand filling, you know, um, dimension would be to add a secondary choil. I really think that that would be a nice feature for them to throw into the Endura and the Delica as well. Uh, sort of along the lines of the Sage, which you can see there, but also the, the Bird Car Car too. I honestly feel like this is a superior knife ergonomically over the Endura, simply because there is that choil that you can choke up there, which is really excellent. So I hope when whenever they really say Delica f 5, and an Endura 5, I hope that they sort of incorporate that into the design. I think that would be pretty cool. And you can see that the, the actual handle on the Sage and the Delica, not radically different, more or less the same size. Maybe this is slightly wider. But you can see how much I've got sticking out the hand now when I can choke up on the blade. 
which I actually do, I think, more regularly. Uh, I think that's how I would naturally grip it. So I like that a little bit better than the than the Delica, but obviously it's a much more expensive knife as well, right? So uh, yeah, for EDC, like I was saying, this is as small as I want to go, and it, it works really well. In the pocket, it's pretty much awesome. Uh, I don't actually have a pocket here, unfortunately, but I'll show you on this piece of paper what it looks like more or less when it is clipped in the pocket. You can see how much you'll have sticking out there. I think that's pretty much ideal. The SOG, uh, of course, has that deep carry clip, but that, that clip feels a lot weaker to me. I feel like that could snap off or bend very easily. But I mean, you can see the difference, obviously. The, the SOG pretty much disappears, and the, the um, Delica has a little bit sticking out, but that's not too much at all. I think that's qu quite a reasonable amount. Um, the clip itself, actually, I personally really like it. I think this wears fairly gracefully. It's funny how so many people complain about pocket clips getting chipped or something like that, like the paint getting chipped. Um, for me, that's never been an issue. This is probably my most chipped pocket clip that I have, and I think that that's wearing pretty gracefully. If you really had a huge problem with it, I'm sure you could just take it off and spray paint it, you know, and then put it back on, and it would take you probably a total of like half an hour of your life or something. Uh, but honestly, I think that as far as wear and tear goes, this knife looks pretty much brand new. The only telltale sign is that pocket clip, which I honestly think looks pretty cool. It looks like I've carried it for a while, which I have. Um, you know, I don't want to be one of these people that uh, all my knives look brand new because that means I never really use them. And sitting around in front of your computer cutting paper doesn't really count. You have to use it for other things. Um, so yeah. Uh, about the lock, uh, what I will say about a lock back is I do really like it now. When I first bought it, I was not overly fond of it, honestly. Uh, coming from sort of a liner lock beginnings, it's so easy to operate that one-handed, you know, and it's so like fast to open, fast to close, boom, 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 nice and easy, right? So when I first got this, I had mixed feelings, of course, like I thought the knife was cool, but I just kind of said to myself, how can I open and close this one-handed? It was a little stiffer when I first got it. So I found myself having to do it two-handed and oh man, what a buzz kill that was. Uh, but this knife does wear in and I find that now I can kind of just give it the shakedown, pretty easy to close it one hand. Um, so yeah, it's uh, really easy to operate. feels very safe. Uh, you know, I've never had a lock accidentally disengage on me. So I think there's a lot of like paranoia in the knife community about, oh, if you squeeze it too hard, it could fail or something. That's like, I don't know what those people are talking about, honestly. That's like a one in a million thing. So I really like the lock now. Uh, that being said, it did take a while to grow on me, right? Uh, so what else? So opening the knife. You can open it slowly, which is basically what I did for the first, I don't know, few months that I had it. I found that I was not able to flick it open the same way that I was the... Uh, the um, Tenacious. I found that that opened a lot faster when I was first getting used to it. Now um, I can get it open very fast, you know, a little bit of wrist action maybe, maybe not. Let me just try to do it without moving my wrist at all. Yeah, see, so it, it loosens up, you get used to it. It is really fast. For a lock back, that's super fast compared to, um, and I know this is not a fair comparison, but the cold steel, for example, they're, you know, triad lock, lock back, kind of a different lock. But I find that these require a lot more wrist action to open. If I don't open my wrist and I just try to flick it, you get it. That was pretty good, actually. That was pretty damn close to being all the way, but um, it's pretty hard to do. And also these really beat your thumbs up trying to disengage these. I found that uh, my thumbs were getting like really sore for a couple of weeks and I couldn't really figure out why but it coincided with the purchase of several cold steel knives and the triad lock is amazing don't get me wrong but in terms of operation um this is a lot smoother to use definitely when you push it down that uh that boyd detent or whatever it's called um people complain about that and say it's not necessary or whatever you know what maybe it's not necessary in terms of safety but in terms of comfort just being able to push down there and not have those sharp corners like digging into your fingers really makes a huge difference. And I'll zoom in here or just show you close up what I'm talking about. Like look at this lock. 
this is like very painful to push down and I've got like calluses on my thumbs from from using it uh, not to mention the fact that the like muscles or whatever in my fingers were getting sore um, so yeah this lock is pretty much awesome and just the smoothness of this knife very nice and smooth locks up very nicely uh, I stabbed a bunch of cardboard with it recently just uh, before this video and uh, I don't know, I can't really detect a lot of movement there at all. Like up and down, there's nothing. Side to side, maybe like a minuscule amount after after that, but definitely nothing bad at all. Especially when you compare it to the SOG Flash 1, which basically I've done nothing with. I kind of just left it in the drawer. But this thing rocks all over the place, you know? Side, to, like you can see that definitely in the video. Um, up and down, side to side, and it hasn't even had any hard use. I haven't stabbed it into anything, definitely. Um, so the lockup is excellent, deployment's awesome, I really like the lock as well. Oh, the steel, so that's, uh, maybe I'll kind of wrap it up with the steel. So VG10, I think that this really is the reason why this knife is as expensive as it is. I have heard some people complain about the price of the Delicas and the Enduros, which I will bring back there. And I'll show you the nice Chinese produced one here in the background because that obviously is an alternative, right? But, uh, yeah, this knife costs, in my store, about $65. I think this one is $70. Sometimes they're on sale, but generally speaking, that's how much they cost. That's a lot of money. I think when I bought this, actually, last year, um, it was cheaper. I think it was around $50 or maybe $55, something like that. And it has gone up. I've noticed that Spyderco's knives have gone up in price, as have pretty much all the knives. Just watch a Nut and Fancy video from like 2010, 2011, something like that. He's talking like 40, 50 or something like that. Like his prices are so much lower than anything I ever see knives for anymore. So talk about hyperinflation, right? But that being said, you know, 55, $60 is a lot of money to pay for a plastic handle. But that money is probably going towards the steel that's in the knife. And of course, this is the um, Spyderco VG10, made in the Seki City, Japan. FFG, of course. Um, it's a great slicer also. Uh, I'm not gonna try to slice paper with it now because I just cut up a bunch of rope and cardboard and all this stuff. But uh, it is a great slicer and it's super easy to resharpen. VG10 is one of my favorite steels because it is somewhere, I would say, in between 8CR13 MOV, VG10, S30V. And the pricing of these knives reflects that, right? This is, you know, $35, $55, 100 So if you're looking for value, you know, value and performance, that blend, I think that this is exactly where you should go. A more fair comparison would be the Mini Grip versus the Delica, but I don't have a Mini Grip. Uh, so anyways, this is a $100 knife where I am. I paid just over 100 bucks for that. The Mini Grip would have been maybe 5 bucks cheaper, so say 95 uh, you've got the 154CM, which is also a great steel, and I think it's very closely um, related, performance-wise, um, to the VG10. I believe this is an American steel, so it's like a little different or whatever. Um, but I think that in terms of rust resistance, edge retention, ease of sharpening, they're pretty much neck and neck. I, I've seen people say one is better, but I mean, there's always these discussions like 154 versus VG10. But I think it's amazing that a mini grip uh, would cost you 95 and this would cost you 55 now which one is the more expensive knife right like now which one is a great value it's uh it's interesting when you look at it that way however um overall i, I absolutely love this knife i'm so happy to be carrying it again i'm probably going to give it a quick uh strop or a sharpen tonight uh, I don't know what I'm going to carry tomorrow. Maybe this, you know, uh, there's absolutely no reason to take this out of your pocket. I think that if you picked up an Endura and a Delica and you called it a day and you said, okay, these are going to be my knives for the next five or 10 years, they would probably last that long and you would probably enjoy them very much. Uh, I certainly have enjoyed mine and uh, the Delica is an amazing knife. Definitely uh, something that goes into the rotation on a very common basis. And there's much more expensive knives out there but would you get much more performance or value? I don't think so. I think this is pretty much as good as it gets. Thanks for watching.